Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. We're here. Naturally, because you hear us. <sighs> Greetings, everyone. Greetings, and welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I am here with my illustrious co host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you doing, and how are you feeling this week, sir? Well, okay, I guess. It's warm, well. but not terribly warm. It, the weather, listen, this climate change, global warming, whatever you want to call it, I've never seen wacky weather like this in my life where I'm freezing at night, I have, to clo I have to close the windows at night and in the morning, which is also very cold. Mm -hmm. And in the day it warms up and they, ha they open right back up again. Mm -hmm. And the, the big powerful window fan goes on because it's not hot enough for air conditioning, but it's just so changeable. And uh, it is what it is, uh, happens to be, uh, uh, what would you say? We're at the tail end of May or the middle the middle of May. That I don't know. Is it the 15th or the 16th? I don't know. Well, look at the calendar. Let's just say it's the middle of May. I didn't put my glasses on yet, or I would look at the calendar. But <laughs> I didn't put them on. Yet. Yeah, I'm tired because I um, I performed last night in Montclair, New Jersey, at the Art Walk outdoor performance with other people. Mm -hmm. uh, with the the flutist, flautist, the flautist Fran, the flautist Fran, Fran the flautist, Fran the Fra Fran the flautist, and uh, can create and uh, violinist Ben Zabel went very well. We had quite an audience, so I want to thank everyone. I want to give a quick shout out to my near dear friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Greetings, Miho. And um, to personal trainer and a former WWE star uh, in Boca Raton, Florida, Mr. Ken Thiessen of KT Training to Win, Akari, USA. I give greetings. And to all of my Facebook group administrators. Sash Boyle, Joe Stebbins, Anthony Laura, uh, uh, Justin Dana Spears, uh, Jay Cruz, mm -hmm. Jean-Luc Odon mm -hmm. from the south of France, wow. and I think I've covered them all, and uh, Oh, I just want to also say hello to the um, the owner and president of the Long Beach Kettlebell Club in Long Beach, California, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Eric Doyle, not to be confused with Sash Boyle, Eric Doyle. Uh, he is having many events there uh, concerning alternative training, and he will be hosting. Uh, Paul Terrace Wolkowinski of the Indian Club World Tour 2015. He will be there to do his uh, his new workshops that he is uh, just starting this year for his Indian Club World Tour. So I give greetings not only to um, Eric Doyle but to uh, Paul Terrace Wolkowinski on your Indian Club World Tour. And uh, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Bakashi of uh, Zirkane, Australia. He is uh, on the east coast of Australia. Great Polyvon that runs the Zirkane there. If you don't know what it is, look it up, Google it. And uh, let's see. That's about it. Now, I don't have much to say. 
but it's pretty important I think because it it's 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 natural comedy but it's very upsetting at the same time uh, first of all I want to start off by saying that uh, fatso uh, crispy a cream Crisco Chris Christie made a very big political mistake mm. by uh, public publicly saying that he chooses Sarah Palin as his uh, vice yeah. presidential running mate he chooses Sarah Palin uh, but you know what every mistake every blunder made by a Republican for 2016 is good news for us progressive liberals and for uh, the man I'm behind uh, as, as uh, Sarah Palin calls him Mr. Bernice Anders otherwise known as Bernie Sanders I wonder why she insults her own sex in that way well I know she she's putting I know him she, down I know she drinks because oh, I don't she, care about that. I'm, I'm saying, why would she do that? Maybe she's stupid. She's in, what? Wait, what's the maybe? I mean, we know she's stupid. I'm just saying, why hasn't somebody call, called her out on the fact that she's insulting her own sex by calling him Bernice? She's putting down women. You know, a lot of women. I tell, I got news for you. I see the thing with liberals is they don't want to offend any group but there are women who I like to I like to squash them like a bug under the Ooh. heel of my, my my shoe and then there are women that I respect tremendously like uh, Elizabeth Warren is, is worthy of great respect she's got to get tougher when it comes to the Republican Party she calls them her colleagues now they're demons but there are women that deserve a hell of a lot of respect but there are others that don't I don't give special treatment to anybody if you're a prick I'm gonna tell you you're a prick and, and and tell you why but the point is you know what I'm shocked because Chris Christie he even though he he's an evil ogre fat ogre obese you know a Republican he doesn't. He has selfish agendas, greed, stinginess. He's just pandering. Uh, with that thing. He takes. You know. I think he's capable of taking the bribe. What do you think? He's capable. He's already taken the bribe. Of taking the payoffs. The cokies and etc. Are right. putting money in his campaign right now. But he's a uh, he's a smart cookie compared to Palin. You know, it's like day and night difference. I mean. Yeah, but that's no that's what I just said. That, the, <laughs> Palin is pandering to the Tea Party. You understand? Christie is a moderate. He's not a Tea Party. He's not a a, a, a real conservative. Do you think he's a moderate? Do you think Scott Walker is actually worse than Christie? Chris Christie? Absolutely. In a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. And, if and Chris Christie were just sticking his nose in in, 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 in in New Jersey, he'd be a hell of a lot different. But he's got appeal to the base. Right. The conservative, uh, uh, stupid yeah. base. Of so, the so what you're saying party. is Chris Christie is a little more reasonable than, let's say, your Republicans down south in a Texas. A Santorum, or a Rick Perry, or, or, a, or Ted, a Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz, or a Rand Paul. Go on and on and on. Yeah. Or a Corley for Farina. Well, oh, that ugly bitch. Which, oh, what an ugly face she has. Now in Wisconsin. They uh, they feel it doesn't make any sense to me. They feel that um, that seafood, potatoes, and ketchup are too luxurious for people on food stamps to purchase. Now, I don't know about you, but potatoes. That's a poor man's food. That's one of the cheapest it saved, items. It saved the Irish there. But that it's it's consistently one of the cheapest items you'll ever find in a market, and ketchup you can buy in a dollar store. Don't try to logically so what, understand. What is so? What is so? 
luxurious about ketchup and potatoes. Don't try to understand that stuff it logically. It doesn't make sense. It's not supposed to. It's just supposed to be against the poor. I mean, I mean, uh, all right. When the poor are getting something for nothing. They don't like it. Why don't they just come clean and say, we don't want to give food stamps to any poor person? And the Wisconsin Republicans. They don't do that. They, they increase the military budget. That's what they do. They, first, I read an article that um, seafood, steaks, and cold cuts, they want want to omit that yeah. from uh, food stamps yeah. because they feel it's a luxury. Yes. Now, some stupid brain dead jerk off is putting potatoes and ketchup with seafood. Remember, Reagan called ketchup a vegetable. But I could buy a school lunch program. Listen, I could buy a big bottle of ketchup right now at the local dollar store. Not a little bottle, a big bottle. So, what? Where is there? It doesn't make sense. These are these are it's supposed to be logical. How, uh, people who who graduated from law school. A lot of them, they were lawyers or they have college degrees. Not when they're sucking up to their party. Okay, you can brain if, dead. Listen, if you want to suck up to your party, and you want to be a corporate coke sucker, and be a, dr a drone to the to the Tea Party movement, mm. that's fine. You want to take bribes, that's fine. But don't put potatoes and ketchup in with seafood. That's so, good. So the reality is, what they're really trying to say is, and even Jeb Bush says, you know, I'm going to read about him next. They don't want to give the poor anything. That's is correct. the reality of it. That's correct. Because once you start with steaks and seafood and cold cuts and potatoes and ketchup, next will be ice cream and cookies and cake and uh, and candies and uh, oh, that would be bad. And and next will be oh, you can't get canned chili. You got to get a can of beans. Oh no, chili is too luxurious for the poor. Mm -hmm. Got to stick to the beans. Before you know it, the poor will be able to buy <coughs> milk. Eggs and beans. No, they won't be able to buy anything. They want this is just incrementally trying to lead to the fact that there will be no social safety net. Get it through your So head. they want the poor to become either enslaved, enslaved by the corporations, by the corporate oligarchy, or they want the poor to die. It happened in France, it happened in England, it happened in Scotland, it happened in Ireland at the pre-industrial revolution. I it's read, always been like I that. I read an article, I don't know if it was... California or what? But there, there are, there are privatized prisons that have juveniles in them, and they're all wearing orange jumpsuits. There, there is your not only your free them young baby. Not only is that your free slave labor, but that is legalized child slave labor. You heard labor. Newt Gingrich. Child labor. You heard Newt Gingrich. What did the motherfucker say? The kids should be doing work in school. Custodian, as a custodian. If, yeah. if their mother is getting food, he didn't say anything about welfare and food stamps or rent subsidy. He says just food stamps. Like big damn deal. They're give they're giving you so much when you're on social services. Anyway, they're giving you nothing. They're giving you shit. Okay. Compared nothing. to the cost of living, they're giving you shit. Compared to the corporate welfare that these companies, these fat cats, get billions, billions of dollars a year. And the crooked Pentagon, which loses money. Trillions of dollars cannot be accounted for. But they want to increase that budget and cut yeah. the other one, the social safety net. Well, there are, there are people okay. making big money off of war. No shit. You know, but but it's okay for the rich to get free welfare in billions oh, of dollars. Yeah. That's taxpayers' money, right? Well, we make it up. If you're going to give cuts to them, who do you think is going to make it up? Well, the the, the, the burden is on the middle class, isn't it? The tax tax and the poor. What do you talk like that? Poor don't pay taxes. How the fuck do poor pay taxes? Did you ever hear of sales taxes? Did you ever hear of uh, 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 property taxes if they're lucky to property. have a friggin' home? 
Are you talking about consumption? Et cetera? You're talking about you most. Pay in, you know, there's more than one tax. They pay. Income tax is if you're making money. If they're not making money, they're not paying income tax. But they're they're paying. So they're paying consumption taxes. Yeah. All kinds of taxes. Sales tax. What do you mean all kinds of taxes? There's more than just income tax. Consumption, in this big right? Big country. If you're a poor slob, and you buy something that is uh, non-grocery, yeah. you get slapped with a, sa a state sales tax. That's correct. In New Jersey, it's what, 7%? 7%. Something like that? Yeah. So what, 7 cents on a dollar, right? Yeah. Okay. Folks, this is all capitalism in a conch shell. I'm telling you right now, capitalism in a conch shell. I might as well give you the double whammy. There is no trickle-down economics. It's all siphon up to the top 20%. Devil's economics. Siphon up. Wake up, people. Make sure everybody votes. Capitalism in a conch shell beyond thunder conch at its worst. Okay, Jeb Bush. Oh, boy, he's such a brilliant man. Too bad he's... Um, People He's are, so brilliant he needs his brother to advise him well, on foreign policy? Uh, not only that, he is plagued by the uh, the mistakes of his brother G.W. Bush because they, well, they kind of, they, people kind of clumped them all together in one clan, the Bush, the Bush clan. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. when you deliberately go say that your brother is going to be your foreign policy advisor, what do you expect? Hey, that student, that fem was it a female who told female. Jeb who told Jeb Bush that your brother created ISIS? Yeah. GW created I what did he what did he say? Hamana Hamana Hamana. Hamana Hamana Hamana. Ha 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 Jeb his brother's gonna be his advisor. Alright. The genius Jeb Bush strikes again. Jeb Bush wants to replace Obamacare with a disease prevention applications on an Apple computerized watch where people will hear a beep if they eat the wrong food, like a jelly donut. Ooh. Now, how long did it take him to come up with this brilliant replacement? He did not come up with it. For Obama Some advisor care. did. But this is no solution to the poor getting health care. It, it, it's stupid. It's crazy, right? It, it, how does that replace Obamacare? How does what Jeb Bush said replace uh, uh, a way that the poor is, are getting health care? It does not, but it is a talking point. Because of late, uh, when the Republicans criticize it, uh, people say, well, what are you going to replace it with? Well, now they have a replacement, don't they? As a yeah. talking point, he yeah he was emphasizing prevention instead of giving. Uh, that's like telling. That's like Republicans telling the poor, "Well, go to your local church and relatives to get help," instead of having welfare. You know, uh, oh, your your watch is going to beep when you eat a jelly donut. Mm -hmm. Oh, you shouldn't be eating that. So in other words, in other words, he's blaming the poor for wanting a single-payer system or Obamacare because it's their fault that they get sick so it's your there he's putting the blame on the poor for getting sick to require an Obamacare it's just the talking point it is not something real that Republicans will get behind and actually do you mean like the talking okay. points on Fox News Yes. All the idiotic statements. Those talking points go out every morning <coughs> to everybody. <coughs> and they say, all you have to do is listen to Fox at, 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 at any particular several times a day, and they're all saying the same thing. Same shit. Same shit. Capitalism in a conch shell. Um, of course, I promised you a different gargoyle, and there he is. Uh, <coughs> Well, anyway. Looks like a dog. Or, or a howl. No, oh, they, they come in different forms. So do angels come in different forms, according to the Bible. So? Physical forms. Flowers come in different varieties, too. Yeah. So what? So what? So what? It's just a matter so. of, uh, you know, life comes in varieties. All right. 
You know? Okay. I thought you were you were putting down the So gar why wouldn't gargoyles? Or anything. Humans yeah. come in different varieties. Yeah, somebody got pissed at me because I, I uh, there was an article about a person being told not to have the baby because she's very ugly and the baby will, uh. will look like her and be ugly. And I says, well, ugly people shouldn't reproduce. So I got a lot of heat for that. Uh -huh. Hey, I got to look at their ugly face. I got to look at uh, uh, Carly F F Fiorini. Fiorini's Fiorino. ugly face. I don't know face. what the hell her name is. She, she, I heard she was a very, she wasn't a very successful CEO for Hewlett. Oh, Hewlett she's trying to make it different For now. Hewlett Packard, you know. Yeah, she got thrown out because of office politics. It wasn't Not because she did anything wrong. It wasn't her fault. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So they singled her out. They picked on her. Yes. yes. So. Probably because she was a woman. Well, maybe she sucked as a CEO. She did. <laughs> I These mean, talking points. T t uh, she drove the company down, and uh, you know, I'm sure she. I'm sure they gave. It, maybe they gave it a golden parachute, that big bonus. Well, she did get. Called the golden parachute, which they I think. Do that. Hey, they're lucky they get the salaries they get for pushing papers around a desk. CEOs. If they do that, even. If they do that, yeah. Okay, let us sink our teeth into these readings. So we didn't, we weren't too too long-winded with the formalities. Okay. All right. All right. To what we were talking about. Yep. The House defied a veto threat from President Obama on Friday and approved a. Six hundred and twelve billion dollar defense policy bill. He could still veto it, can he? Of course he can. But they did it anyway against his threat. They already they're already Because they don't want to give any money to social programs. But God forbid we want that but military. Who the hell are we afraid of in the world? Who? Where when was the last time the United States borders were threatened? World War Two. That's it. Period. And and, and, and they're but they're already pissed. They've already pissed away a fortune. And what them. border was threatened then? Hawaii. It wasn't a state then. Right. Uh huh. Oh, so technically. Technically, yes. Oh, wait a minute now. So then. Yeah, okay, World War One, the U.S. borders were not threatened. Oh, so let's go Correct. back. Shall we say maybe the Alamo? Maybe? Or, or the Civil War? What, the, what do you mean maybe the Alamo? Texas is the one that annexed the property that was Mexico's. Mexico owned it. Yeah. Okay. So and they wanted it back. Okay, they wanted it back. There's a new movie out now, you know, doing doing the Alamo. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, and, and they want to repeat the Alamo Part Two because the the right wing Texans like Ted Cruz are all they got their panties in a bunch because Obama wants to invade yes, he's Texas. Texas. Oh, by the way, I put that cute photo the beginning of our show where Obama's holding up a t-shirt and says I invaded Texas and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. He does have a sense of humor. You know. Anyway, Democrats are complaining that this busts budget limits on military spending makes it harder for the president to close the U.S. prison for suspected terrorists at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. The vote was 269 to 151. The Republicans voted overwhelmingly for it and were joined by 41 the Democrats. Should I say uh, two sides of the same coin, corporatism? Another 143 Democrats voted against it. A 2011 bipartisan budget deal placed limits on defense and domestic spending. The House defense bill skirts those caps 
by putting $89 billion of the total into an emergency war fighting fund which is exempt from the caps. Democrats said Republicans won't do an end run around caps in funding non-defense agencies opening the door to sharp cuts in domestic spending. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi Pussy Pelosi Democrat of California Bipartisanship Pelosi said the defense bill will be a prelude to future reductions that would devastate other vital pillars of our national strength. House Speaker John Boehner Orange Republican face. of Ohio. The orange face crybaby. Accuse the Democrats of letting politics come before national security. National security. Oh, we are in danger here. Well, yes, our military budget, we spend we spend more than I believe it is like 20 some other countries combined. Combined. Yeah. And homeland security's ended up being a fiasco. Boondoggle. A boondoggle. Okay. The House bill provides $515 billion for defense, $89.2 billion for emergency war fighting fund, for a total of $604.2 billion. Another $7.7 billion is mandatory defense spending that Congress has not offered. That means the bill would provide the entire $611.9 billion desired by the President, but Obama and Democratic lawmakers still opposed it. Democrats said putting money in the war account and not the base budget prevents the Pentagon from doing long-term planning for costly programs and weapons. The White House has pushed back against a host of provisions in the bill, including one that would make it harder for Obama to close the military prison for terror suspects at Guantanamo Bay by imposing stiffer requirements for transferring these individuals to other countries. Can't they just stick them in one of the federal prisons on the mainland? You, in they the mainland? can't because they can't convict them. That's why they're in Guantanamo. That's correct. Where and technically Guantanamo belongs to Cuba. That's correct. Should put them so on. So it's that. not really, you know, under American law. They should. They should reopen the rock Alcatraz and make that the. The new Guantanamo Bay, you know. But a lot of those in there are innocent. They were put there by uh, jerks in the Northern Alliance or whatever the hell they were and everything. And they were, oh, this guy's a, this guy's a terrorist. This is terrorist. No proof of that whatsoever. And they just throw them in there. That's why they can't convict them. They have no evidence. They have no evidence against a lot of them. Why are they there? Because they're off the battlefield. Or any other field. You know? Like all aspiring Republican presidential candidates, when it comes to talking taxes, Governor Christie hails President Ronald Reagan's tax policies. What Christie fails to mention is that Reagan's tax record departed 180 degrees from what is the current party line on taxation. When Reagan took office in 1981, the popular conservative mantra was characterized by the Laffer Curve. 
that theory, long debunked, mm -hmm. contended that reductions in tax rates would generate more business activity and tax revenue actually would increase. The theory was immediately acted upon when Reagan signed into law one of the largest tax cuts in post-war history. A 23% across the board cut of income tax rates. The annual federal deficit in Reagan's first year of office was 2.6% of the gross domestic product. By 1983, the percentage rose to 6% and stood at 5% for the next three years. Reagan's response was to sign in 1982 and 1984 the largest tax increases ever enacted in peacetime. Yeah, and it wasn't, it wasn't on the rich. Now, Mr. Uh, Rush Limbaugh doesn't believe any of that. He doesn't believe no. that Reagan ever raised taxes. Well, he, yeah, he also believes that gays are going to turn Americans away from Christianity. He yeah. wouldn't know a Christian if he tripped over one. Well, you see what Number I one. you see what I posted. Uh, 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 they're in no position to throw stones in a glass house, you know. About they're not. Oh, being, they'll do it anyway. They're not being tiny sins, medium-sized sins, and and big, giant jumbo sins, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they are not without sin. They do it anyway because they have learned that uh, as long as you criticize the guy first. That is what is heard by most of the people and will be remembered. You mean they're on the offense? That's correct. And and they're also using the Nazi Germany system of repeating the same lie oh, over, and over, yes. over yes. and over again. Yes. Over and over again. And the the average Joe six pack, the, you know, your average mainstream American is not that intelligent. I mean <laughs> By 1988, the federal deficit was reduced to 3.1% of GDP. The Republican Party's solution for reducing the federal deficit today, which in 2014 stood at only 2.8%, is to cut federal spending on essential domestic projects rather than rewriting the tax code, as Reagan did in 1986, when the tax burdens of earned income and income from capital were imposed more equitably. But of course there was also another tax that was put into effect on Social Security. The payroll tax was raised. Weren't those Now is that raised on the rent? Because at that time, I think it's 113000 now, uh, once you're making $113,000, you don't pay Social Security taxes anymore. Yeah, but were, so back then, weren't the, the people that were working throughout their life already paying their taxes? Why are they? Why? It's like taxing unemployment insurance. Unemployment insurance. They do that, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Now you said the poor don't pay any taxes. No, I'm talking. I'm talking about right now income tax, federal and state. Well, forget about taxes. income tax. No, the poor pay consumption taxes. Because you're not paying income tax if you don't make any income. Listen, if somebody's really poor, rock bottom poor, <laughs> and they're receiving SSI or uh, mm -hmm, SSI. SSD or uh, well, that's not poor. That's disabled. All right, or welfare. SSI. Well, well, they're as welfare. Far, as, SSI. as far as the government's projection of what poverty is, yeah, they're poor. Uh, you know, if they're making less than a hundred, I mean, less than what is it, twenty-five 
20,000, 22,000 a year? That's for a family of three or four. Oh, okay. Not okay, for one right. individual. I think one individual is a maybe four. Anyway, or if you don't have a pot to piss in, uh -huh. without uh -huh. getting too technical, you're paying consumption taxes every time you buy things, non grocery items. While the 1986 Tax Act reduced the top individual rate to 28%, it ended the preference for capital gains subjecting such gains to the same rate as earned income. That would be equivalent to Congress today eliminating the capital gains and dividend preferences on taxable income rates. Instead, Republicans are still irresponsibly promoting the Laffer Curve solution of more tax cuts that Reagan rejected as the answer for the plight of the middle class. The ever disappearing middle class. Yeah. The endangered species middle class. Yeah. Yeah, the middle class is being strangled uh, out of existence, you know, but uh, hey. Because they're a threat. They want to fill up those privatized prisons with free slave labor. They're a threat. They, well, they, well, the fat cats are so greedy and selfish, they don't want competition. That's for sure. So, and, 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 and who makes up the middle class but entrepreneurs, small emerging growth companies, mom and pop stores that might turn into a big company if they're, you know, they're doing yeah. something good. Yeah. I mean, for God's sakes, famous Amos used to give away his chocolate chip cookies on the street. On the streets in Chicago. And there's an example of somebody who was um But what'll happen? Uh, pretty down and out. Famous Amos or the other whatever. Once they succeed, the big boys come in and they want to take them over. Shut them down. They want to buy you or out. whatever. They want to buy. Hey, you got you got a great thing going. You got a great company. We'll offer you uh, five billion dollars. What hey. do you think? You want it? Oh God! I got to talk to my lawyer. We got to sit down. All right, six billion. All right. All right uh, no, they're not going to say six billion. We're giving you five billion. You take it or leave it. And if you if you if you leave it, we're gonna put you out of business. That's the way they do. How are they gonna put? How are they gonna put a famous Amos, oh, who, who where people love your freaking cookies, out of business? How does that happen? Put a cheaper product on this, on the market. That's the same thing. That's how you do it. Oh, how do you think American business is the same succeeds? thing? The same thing. Yeah, the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Even if it's like a family recipe. The same thing. Yeah. You well, can put the same thing without the, you know, if, if it's protected by a patent. Let me tell you something. Which it probably isn't. When I was, every time I went to South Florida, I used to love to eat at Polio Tropical. It's, oh. it's a fast food restaurant with home, family style, home cooking Spanish food, Latin, Latin food. It was started by a Cuban. Excellent. Great portions, excellent. Long story short, they opened one up here. Um, I, it was franchise. It was sold as a franchise, I believe. No, 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 not as a franchise. I'm sorry. It was. Now I I can't speak for the ones in South Florida, but this one was bought out by the Carroll Corporation. Never heard of it before. But anyway, the food was nothing like the original food in South Florida. It was. There's one also in Clifton. It was. Um, the portions were much smaller. The quality was downhill. If you if you order something with meat in it, you got more gravy than meat. Oh, they, that's like those Salisbury steak dinners, you know, on, encore. Encore frozen Salisbury. Hungry steak. man. In other words, this is what you got. Oh, yeah. Boston Markets, Boston Markets um, frozen dinners are nothing like the food in Boston Market. Uh -huh. They're crap. They're full of chemicals, and uh, mm. you know I forgot to bring in my 
my item to show for Chisler's Hall of Shame because I was so freaking tired from last night. Mm -hmm. I forgot to bring it in. I'll have to do it. it. Pisses me off when I forget things. I have to do it next week then. I don't Make even want to. Make a list. Yeah, you know what? You. I'm going to have to get a notepad and write things down. You know? So, anyway. Or you can get one of those things you speak into. I can do that. Remember I, to go shopping I can do I, soup. I can do that with audacity, with the program. Well, then That's you got to have the computer. This thing you carry in your pocket. It's I'm, a little I, thing. I have, you, a, you know. I have a problem with bulky things in my pocket. They, they, they irritate me. Uh, me too. Yeah. My keys are as, that's as far as I'll go. For the first time, a large study suggests that a vitamin might modestly lower the risk of the most common types of skin cancer in people with a history of these relatively harmless yet troublesome growths. In a study in Australia, people who took a specific type of vitamin B3, riboflavin, niacin, niacin, niacin. I'm sorry. Called nicotinamide. Niacin, nic nicotin, nicotinamide is the non-flush. That's non-flush niacin. For a year at a 23% lower rate of new skin cancers compared to others who took a placebo. That means vitamin takers develop fewer than two of these cancers on average versus roughly 2.5 cancers for the others. The study involved the more common forms of skin cancer Basal and squamous cell cancers, not melanoma. Basal cell carcinoma, you're talking about. They didn't say carcinoma, they said cancers. You said basal. Basal is. Basal and squamous cell cancers. Yeah, well, I think They that, didn't define think that's, any more than that. Well, I think that's the Thank full. You. That's the full medical term for a basal cell. Researchers stress avoiding overexposure. And using sunscreens are the best ways to lower the risk of skin cancer. Now they're saying sun, sunscreens, even 30%, are not 100% guaranteed protection. But don't go out without one anyway. No, no, you, you can, it, it could be abused. You know, you can you, you can't fry. You can't you know, lay out. If you go up like higher, like 50, 60, it's not worth it. I suggest people that really are not allowed to sun themselves, including redheads and you know people like that. I suggest they wear a, a loose linen shirt or a t-shirt, a hat, you know, uh, uh, or bring an umbrella with you because in, in Latin America, the ladies use umbrellas for the sun, not just for rain, yeah. you know? do this quickly here yes, because yes. Uh, meat that has been mechanically tenderized must be labeled and include safe cooking instructions according to a rule announced Wednesday by the United States Department of Agriculture. Oh yeah, the USDA that, that is now sending American raised chickens to China to be processed and sent back to the United States. Yeah. How Gee, that's a love. That? That's a lovely thought. Shame on you, Chisler's Hall of Shame, USDA. There you go. There's an induct induction. The long-awaited rule, which will go into effect next year, comes after a Kansas City Star investigation in 2012 exposed health risks associated with beef that has been run through a mechanical tenderizer. Yeah, it's. it's probably just beats the hell out of it. Punches holes in it. Mechanical tenderizers hammer meat with dozens of needles or small blades to increase tenderness. I've seen it being done. They they, they, they put it out as chopstick. Something like that. You'll take like a really cheap 
lean, super lean, tough piece of raw meat and they'll put it through the machine and the machine will beat the hell out of it, break up the fibers. But the process can drive dangerous pathogens such as E. coli and salmonella deep inside steaks, yeah. roasts, beef would have and e other beef products. Beef would have E. coli, salmonella would be poultry, turkey, chicken. Where they can survive cooking. Really? Or really? Rare. Yeah, when people cook with pink inside. Oh. But it has no flavor when it's well done. Oh, God. It's dry. You know? Where they can survive cooking to rare or medium rare temperatures. Even when the meat appears fully cooked. Mechanically tenderized beef needs to be cooked to a higher internal temperature and also needs to rest for a specific amount of time before it is safe for consumption. I so, saw um, that chef um, Gordon Ramsay yell at this, uh, this kid for cutting beef wellington too soon. He says you have to yeah, let, it let it rest. It rest. You know, I, I all think, the juices go back in. Yeah, I think what happened is the juices flow right out if you, yeah. cook, if you cut it too soon. Which he's right. As, as much as I am not a fan of any of these guys on TV that yell at people all the time, uh, I, 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 I definitely am not a fan of his at all. Or the guy that on the show uh, Bar Rescue that's even worse than Gordon Ramsay. You know. Oh, he's a, he's, a, he's a monster the way he mm. treats people. But but the point is, you got to let it rest. All right, it is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman and yours truly's lunch break. I didn't have time to have breakfast, brunch, so I will have super lunch. Mm. And uh, we will be joined next by the uh, Bible Truths affiliated with how to defeat a conservative just click the pause button and read them and learn Bible um, verses followed by our uh, voiceover artist William Hamilton Morrow the third with his words of wisdom and promo and we'll be back for the balance of the show mm. very invigorating show mm. this week very invigorating indeed. Why not every week? Well, I mean, it, it's going smoothly. Oh, uh, well, let's see. Because we're, we're touching upon a lot of great subjects in a smooth, flowing manner. Oh, I'm sure there'll be some criticism. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, there's always going to be that uh -huh. jealous bastards out there. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. 
go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Moore of the Third, for your words of wisdom and promo. Capitalism in a conch shell. In a conch shell. Beyond thunder conch. Remember. Okay. Let us continue with the balance of the show. Billy Bones. Okay, let's see what we got here. The State Division of Consumer Affairs is warning the public about a scam in which con artists are mailing fake arrest warrants issued by the State Attorney General's office to intimidate victims into sending money. Wow. In one arrest warrant that was sent to a victim, the letterhead states it was issued by the U.S. District Court, and that the victim has been charged with criminal violation, like collateral check fraud and theft by deception. The letter says the victim faces a maximum sentence of three years in prison and a fine well, if you didn't, of up to $24,000. Well, if you didn't do it, call them and find out if it's legitimate or not, because if you didn't do it, it's fraud. And it calls on the victim to pay an outstanding balance of $1,000. $876.48. So forget about it. The Warren gives a number with a 609 area code. <laughs> for victims to call to arrange payments. Usually doesn't, crime usually doesn't work that way. You pay the fee and then, uh, and then they forget all about you. Last month, the division warned that scammers purporting to be representatives of the state attorney general's office were calling victims to demand the payment of non-existent debts. Scam. This attempt to defraud people by appropriating the identity of our office is criminal, unconscionable, and deeply offensive, acting attorney general John J. Hoffman said. The fake arrest warrant is the latest in a series of government imposter scams, such as one in which callers claim to work for the IRS and demand money from victims over the phone. The division warns that these scams, the con artists usually will try to create a fake sense of urgency. Yeah, in demanding payment from the victim. Utilizing fear from the victim. Using the emotion of fear. The division recommends that consumers not send money or give away any personal or financial information without checking to ensure a communication, such as a phone call, email letter, or text message, is valid. Well, uh, myself, Winning nine hundred ninety some odd thousand dollars from Facebook was a scam, because the the individual that claimed to be from the main office of Facebook, well, his profile was bogus, was taken off by Facebook. So my sister was right; it was too good to be true. It was the scam, 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 ram, scam. Sam Sham and the Pharaohs, Wooly Bully. Governor Jerry Brown oh God. 
said an expanding economy has channeled an additional six point seven billion dollars in revenue into the state coffers allowing him to boost proposed spending next year to a record one hundred and fifteen billion dollars what they better do is more areas of California better start doing desalinization uh, of the water for you know most extra money will go to school, Brown said. Democrats who control the legislature said he should spare some cash to augment programs for the poor and the middle class. Why do Democrats always have to prioritize spending and in, on education and children? There's a lot of people that don't have children. I don't, and I, it's not my problem. Future. That's the future of any country. Unbelievable. Educated citizens. That there's too much. It's over. It's an overcoddling. But the Republicans keep cutting it. They keep cutting education and other social programs. Right. I mean, we don't they have. They don't a like an educated citizenship. Well, no, they want to keep you dumb. That's right. Now you got to ask yourself, why didn't Schwarzenegger do this? He, he was Republican. Well, I thought Republicans were better with the economy. That's what they say. Well, yes, that's what they say, but that's what some people believe. And then a Democrat has to come along all the time Fiscal. and clean up after the goddamn elephant has gone by in the parade. F fiscally conservative, which they are not. Right? Oh, yes they are against social programs. Yeah, they attack the small sliver of the pie. Yes. They, they put the blame on the one to two percent of the budget, the small sliver of the pie. Yes. They don't look at the the waste in the large pieces. No, 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 no. You know, like the fact that the rich really do not need any handouts at all. The Bible forbids you to help them. It's true. They have their consolation. You do not help them. You know, money should be allocated to those that really need help. And it should not be, and it's not the rich. And it's not uh, spending trillions on weapons that will never be used. Never be used, and you don't even need the money. I just said, we spend more than some 20 other countries. Who are we afraid of? There you go. We have to spend how much billions or 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 or, or, or uh, whatever on an F-35 mm -hmm. that can't even be flown right <clears throat> properly? Shout out to Jesse Ventura. Be doing a fantastic job over on Aura TV. All right. Um, go ahead. Continue. The state is definitely on the rebound from just a few years ago when the state was mired in red ink said brown a 77 year old democrat who is the longest serving governor in state history the finances of california have stabilized we are balancing our budget and why is he allowing scumbag Peter Brabeck of Nestle's to bottle up California fresh water? He's supposed to be the moonbeam, progressive liberal moonbeam brown. Why does he let Nestle's bottle up valuable water? Possibly because, like the SEC in the Wall Street meltdown, did not go after the big bank. No. You know, a law is just a law, a piece of shit paper or whatever, if you do not enforce it. 
Yeah, if, if, okay. no, if no one is held accountable That's correct. for their actions ever, no one in power, authority, politician, uh, if no, no rich person, if no one is held accountable, then it really is a piece of paper. Missouri House Speaker John Deal. Let's make a deal. Said on Thursday that he is resigning from the legislature after acknowledging that he exchanged sexually charged text messages with a college student serving as a capital intern. Intern, yeah, she, he wanted to make it her... It was not a she. Oh, was it he? Thank you. And he's Republican? Yeah. Oh, they're supposed he's to be... He's against gay. Oh, what a hypocrite. But he's sending text messages to his little boyfriend. The little cabin boy. This is a little cabin boy intern. And he's, so, and he's blatantly anti-gay. And yet he's uh, he wants to pack the kids' fudge. Levity bells. He wants to pack his fudge. Deal, 49, Play said, hide, hide the salami. He's stepping down both from his House Speaker's position and from his elected job as a Republican representative from suburban St. Louis. I made a mistake, Deal said. Oh, like the kid that got his hand, hand caught in a cookie jar. He's so, he feels so much remorse. It's one that calls into question my ability to lead. Nah, it just simply means you're full of shit. <laughs> His resignation announcement came a day after the Kansas City Star released a story accompanied by screenshots of what the newspaper said were electronic messages between Deal and the intern. Oh, wait a minute. It was a she. This must be the other guy. I take that what? back. I thought this was the one that was posted up there on Facebook. The one all right, against all right. Gays, which there, all right, all right. So uh, I am to understand that the, that the real story is that it's a female, yeah, intern. intern. Well, that that doesn't really go contrary to him being anti-gay that just means he wants a hot chick no I hot young said, chick I mixed it up with the other guy that's up there on Facebook oh there there is another Republican another one that's a Republican who was tech sex sexting yeah or whatever and, and he hates gays but he's sexting to a gay or whatever to a male oh we yeah. just don't have his name right now no. Oh, okay so you know it is the, true but it's a different man the intern was identified as Katie Graham, a freshman at Missouri Southern State University. Some of the messages were sexually suggested. He wanted, did he, he ask her if she ever played hide the salami? I don't know what, maybe he's a vegetarian? I have no idea. Oh man, salami is a very tasty food. The United States is a significantly less Christian country than it was seven years ago. It's not supposed to be a Christian country at all. That is the finding in the Pew Research Center's new report. At 70%, Christianity still dominates American religious identity, but the survey shows dramatic shifts as more people leave organized religion and shed spiritual connections along the way. Gee, I wonder why they're all leaving the church. Uh, could it be all the nuts from the Republican Party? All the hypocritical uh, so-called Christians that are making people discouraged. Could it be non-proving? Non-proving? Uh, but I hear the Catholic Church is uh, is doing pretty good because of Pope Francis. Everybody loves Pope Francis 
and, and, and I can see why, I mean. Yes, but Pope Francis, in what you're, you're, uh, you're applauding him for, has nothing to do with the church. So, and so or the church is his. So he's the boss, but he's not that much of the boss of the, of the Catholic Church. Anyway. Well, he's not saying things, basically, that the church has ever been interested in. He's saying them, but this this is not church policy. He's very progressive, but, but the church policy is very right-wing, is what you're saying. That's correct. Okay. And, of course, then you have its history. Because if they were progressive, the church, they will be taking a great deal of that fortune they got locked up, and they will be feeding the children and uh, helping the homeless, you know, and they'll be in Africa with those poor kids, you know, helping out and on missions, you know what I mean, spreading that wealth around to help hey, the poor. We got 16 million poor children in this country. You don't have to go to Africa. To well, find I mean, poor I mean the Vatican. The Vatican has, has to be international. You think they're just going to come to the United States? No, we we have enough money flowing around, ricocheting around the United States to help the U.S. poor. There's plenty of money here. Atheists and agnostics have nearly doubled their share of the religious marketplace an overall indifference to religion of any sort is rising. Among the larger Christian bodies, only the historically black Protestant churches have held a steady grip. Politicians should take note of the change. Traditionally, we thought religion was the mover and politics were the consequence. Today, it's the opposite. Many of today's formerly faithful left conservative evangelical denominations or the Catholic Church, because they saw them align with a conservative political agenda. And they don't want to be identified with that. The percentage of people who described themselves as Christians fell about eight points from 78.4 to 70.6 percent. Catholics dropped both in market share and real numbers. The study put Catholic adults at 51 million, or just over one-fifth of the U.S. population. A drop of about 3%. In 2007, Catholics made up about one quarter of Americans. Almost 13% of U.S. adults are former Catholics. The largest single group who have left the faith in which they were raised. The nuns, not N-U-N, the nuns, 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 Americans who are unaffiliated with brand name religion registered at 22.8% up from 16% eight years ago. Today they are second only to evangelicals 25.4% and ahead of Catholics 20.8%. Among non-Christian faiths, Judaism remains the largest in the United States at about 2%, up slightly from 2007. Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, each have less than 1% of the United States population. Although the Muslim and Hindu population have both grown rapidly, the current survey questioned 35,071 U.S. adults last summer. Its huge size allows detailed analysis of even fairly small religious groups. The margin of error 
where the full sample is plus or minus six tenths of a percentage point. Well, people are at the end of their rope, things are getting worse, and uh, a lot, many of them are so discouraged, um, they just don't see any reason. They have lost their uh, interest in the churches, and uh, of course the churches have uh, pastors that are not giving the proper information out that really do not know the Bible or know how to interpret it properly and the people are just not hearing the truth of how what is causing their lives to be so miserable and how it ties into the Bible they're, they're just not being explained things you know just like they believe Republican lies just not being properly informed. I am not much of a gambler, but my family used to like playing the New Jersey Lottery scratch-offs for fun. My sister liked the bingo scratch-offs. And at holiday dinners and other large family gatherings, we liked to hand out one dollar scratch-offs and play together. One year, my young cousin won enough to buy a plane ticket to California. When we played the bingo scratch-offs before privatization by the state, we never won much money, but we would win small amounts once or twice a week and buy more scratch-offs. But then came privatization. We stopped winning small amounts and won larger amounts, but less often. Now we haven't won at all in a month or so. The other day I went to the machine in the local grocery store and found no bingo scratch-offs at all. All I saw were big, new, brightly colored games that I didn't recognize. I don't think any of them were very cheap to play. Wouldn't you say the uh, New Jersey Lottery is a tax on poor people? Well, any any schmuck can be lucky and win. They don't have to. I don't care poor. about that. I just said, isn't it a tax on poor people? No. Why not? the lottery because anybody could win not just poor people who cares about winning I'm talking about spending the money buying the tickets is that not a tax you don't have to gamble it's, it's uh, your fault if you have a problem with gambling uh, bet with well, what if the carrot is held before your nose bet w with your head not over it constantly people have to take some responsibility you can't win it if you ain't in it well, if you're if if, if you're weak-minded, that's that's your fucking problem. What if you want to get ahead? Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. It's a tax. That's like saying I want to close down casinos because of all the compulsive gamblers, all the lives you you, you might ruin. Well, if you got a problem with compulsive gambling, why should everybody else suffer? Why should I change my driving habits because the guy in the next lane has a baby on board sign? You see? How does that have to do with you? It's, it, 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 it's part of the... It, it, it's tied into a political philosophy. I like how we got off the subject again, as usual. It's related. It's related. Where? It's, it's, it's related. Attacked. It's like, you know, feeling uh, uh, too sorry for a group or it's coddling a group. Is yeah. capital gains an income tax? Well, if you liquidate it, yeah, if, yeah. If it's if it's if it's liquidated, it's not an income tax. It's well, a tax. It's a tax. Right, but it's not an income tax. If you if you own, it's a tax on income, but it's not an income tax. You okay. Explain that to me. 
So Bill, Bill Gates owns supposedly 500,000 shares of Monsanto. If Bill Gates decides to sell every no, one of them... No, not to sell. Dividend comes in every year. Okay, they're most likely... And he pays capital gains tax instead of income taxes on that money. No, you, you pay income tax on the dividends, on the interest. I just said that. But not on the capital gain is like the the value of the item. When you sell it, you pay a tax on it, like real estate. And when the dividend comes in. Well, that's... that's it's, it's, it's calculated under a, a capital gains tax, not an income tax. They're calculating interest... As Whatever comes gains, into you. That's income tax. That is made from your stocks and your bonds and all this other bullshit. Yeah. It's just a bookkeeping term. And so is the lottery. Well, the lottery really uh, would help the economy a lot more if it did not tax winnings of gambling. Gambling winnings. That's another issue. You know. It's another issue. I'm talking about the issue of the poor slob who wants to get ahead and thinks he can get ahead because of the carrot dangling in front of his face. You can't win it if you ain't in it. So but he's got to buy a ticket every week. Is that not a tax? That's my point. Nothing else. No. Okay? But I can't compare it to other things. If that's not a tax, then the capital gain is not a tax, it's an income tax. See? It's all in how you want to say it is. Well, if it's something that's the person's fault, and it's freedom of choice, I don't, I don't, I, I don't see, I don't see that anybody well, should feel was, sorry for the it person. It was the Republicans and the rich's fault that made capital gains and not an income tax. Who do you think changed the law? Huh? It's all in what you say it is. Hey, uh, somebody, somebody who has kids that doesn't have a pot to piss and just to get more welfare and they keep on having babies, they should, they should get mandatory tubal ligation. Oh, man. You know, but the point is if it's, look. This is right wing talk. But if it's you, why, you know, you, you. How do you, how You're do you talking about, about coddling and feeling sorry to, for a group of people. You know, no, like any not. group, any no, group. You're not. But you're no, it's your choice to keep on having baby you're after baby a after right baby. Wing talking point. I don't, states clearly. I'm talking about if a if a mother has too many babies, she's on welfare and she gets increased welfare. She because all these all these unnecessary babies is a burden on society. It's a burden on her too. Absolutely. And it ain't enough money coming in from uh, social services to pay for it all. Well, then she should get a tubes tied. Uh, uh, legated. That's another issue. Oh. But it's a, it's you a, just said that. But it's a solution. You, no, it ain't. You said the right wing talking point. The right wing talking point is that th there are women who go around having all kinds of babies Octomom. just to get welfare. Octomom. This is how I think. I think I'm, I'm a person of science. See this guy up here? Old man Spock, the late Leonard Nimoy. Logic. Lodge who, who we got to feel sorry for them because you know they're living in the ghetto and uh, oh the kid the kid you know the poor kid that uh, doesn't have a father so he should be you know don't go hard on him when he robs cars or, or he uh, he holds what up does any of he that? holds up a liquor store it's a mentality what of feeling sorry any, for everybody what does any of that have to do with what the talking point that you said that there are women around and have a bunch of babies so they can go on welfare. That was the talking point. All of this other stuff is extraneous. No, not everybody does that. Some. You can't prove that. Well, if they're poor, they shouldn't be getting pregnant. Oh my God. They shouldn't be getting... Hey, listen. If people, like, around here, a lot of people have... Um, go over in India. Have cats, and, and the cats go, go out and they get pregnant. Well, you know what? If you don't, if you, if you don't take full responsibility... For you, that you shouldn't have a pet. If you don't get the cat neutered or spaded, you shouldn't have a pet. The same thing goes for being a parent of human 
babies. If you cannot assume the responsibility, get a tubal ligation or an IUD put. Tell that to Indians. It applies to the whole world. Really? I just said, tell yeah. that to the Indians. It ain't working over there. I don't know if they're practicing good contraception. They're not practicing any. No, they're just, the, 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 the scum guppies are flying all over the place. Well. Hey. It, look, you got things that bite you right on the nose, and if you if you got it and it's real, there's a there's an answer to it. There's, there are ways that can solve the problem, and then there are ways that might solve it, and then there are ways that can't solve it. Tubal ligation just happens to solve the problem of the poor person who shouldn't be having and babies. Who's going to do this forced <laughs> tubal ligation? Then you don't get the uh, who's going to do? Then you don't get extra welfare. Then you don't get then you don't get extra welfare. Like then you don't get extra welfare. You want to get knocked up by every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the neighborhood? You know what? You're poor. We didn't say you that. don't get the money. It's the, you're not getting money in the first place. You're getting a stipend. Yeah. Yeah. You're not getting any money. You're not being made rich by having a bunch of babies and being on that welfare. Come on. Wake up and smell the coffee. It all adds up. A baby here and a baby there and it all adds yeah, up. Yeah, $20 a month. Big deal. $20 a month? Yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm making kids. a point. You know what? All right. The point is you're talking about taxes. Uh, you're saying tax is a tax just under a different name. Capital gains, dividends tax. You, uh, 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 I, j I already said that, that social, I mean, that uh, winnings... Unemployment insurance, these things should not be taxed. Uh, inheritance really should not be taxed because the old, the old geezer that worked all his life paid taxes on that money. Maybe. So, what does that have to do with his inheritance that he's going <clears> to <throat> give to his kids who will not have to work? Well, the government sees that as income when you inherit money from an uncle, grandfather. So what? I just said. How come you go off the point all the time? I'm talking about unfair. He's giving away to his kids his inheritance. What are you? What well, are you trying kids. to get at? You're trying to undermine old James P. Madonna over here. Absolutely. What are you trying to do? Because you talk right with. What is your point? No, I don't believe in coddling to groups of people. I don't. I just, I'm sorry, but I don't. You either coddle to the rich or you coddle to the poor. One or the other. No, you don't coddle anybody. Oh, really? Then what kind of economics you got there? <clears throat> you call it straight down the middle like a baseball umpire. Well, and what you kind of economics And is you that? do the fair things. What is the fair things under what your, your economic uh, 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 policy? If then? it's your choice and you put yourself in a hole, the general population should not have to be burdened by it. It's your choice. What if you hell? end up committing suicide because you're a compulsive gambler, you shouldn't. Other people should not have have to to How to not be able get, to gamble. How did we get to compulsive gambling? What point are you trying to make with the goddamn taxes? Very simple point. What the say it? The lottery is a tax. The That's lottery. The, point. the lottery in itself is a tax. Correct. How do you figure that the lottery in itself is How do you is figure that capital gains is not an income tax? Well, it's a form of income tax. No, it isn't. It's, it's a not. tax, not an income tax. But when you sell the real estate, you pay capital gains taxes, right? Yeah, 15%, not 39.6. Well, then somebody increased... Uh, somebody what? Somebody what? What do you wait? Wait. Uh, Reagan did not like the capital gains tax. No Republican does. Okay. Now, capital gains. Um, when you liquidate something, and the value of that real estate went up, that's income. You made a profit on it. You should. It's not income. It's taxed as a capital gain. You see. You want to fight it's not out. income. It's not income. You made money on the real estate. The real the home property went up a eh, hundred thousand dollars from the time you bought it. 
You sell the goddamn property. And guess what? And you made a profit. And you pay 15% instead of 39.6. That's the point. Well, that's the point. Now, who put that into law? Conservatives. Oh, well, you're talking fair. You're talking you were about, talking fair right now. You're, you're talking about the poor guy with the carrot in front of his face. That's right. Buying a lottery ticket. That's right. Because the unfairness is glaring, isn't it? But you, in right-wing talking points, are attacking the poor guy well, why is instead the, of the guy up there. Well, the carrot... Who don't want to pay is 39.6. The, the carrot should not be in the form of the state lottery. The carriage it ain't be... anymore. It's privatized. Uh huh. All you right. gotta do a little more thinking here. Commence. I thought New Jersey was making money on the lottery before privatization. And maybe the lottery and the scratch offs will become profitable again if they make the games more like Las Vegas and Atlantic City. Glitzy and expensive. But they've lost me as a customer. Why privatize? Did the governor just want to show he was a good Republican by privatizing something? Yeah. I am so sad. Because playing used to be cheap and fun. And I didn't mind donating a few dollars to help education and senior citizens, but three dollars is my limit. Three dollars is his limit. Well, then three. just buy three dollars worth of tickets and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Whoever the guy is. Spend them why give the money to the privatized company rather than the state of New Jersey? Well, I, you know me, I'm against privatization. Really? I wouldn't have known it from the arguments that's been going on here. No, I don't feel sorry for people that put themselves in holes. You put yourself in a hole, sink in the goddamn quicksand. Nobody said that anybody put anybody in a hole. You assumed that. I said simply that the lottery is a tax. End of subject. Now the lottery, the lottery used to be run by the used to be run by the state where the money that's correct was Went supposed to, to help education and seniors and seniors. Correct. So what you're saying is, since it's privatized, it really doesn't do that. That's correct. It anymore. goes to the company who owns it now. Well, what else is new with with Republican Chris Christie or Christine Whitman or whatever? Yeah. Or Tom Kane, they, yeah. they don't want. They don't care about helping seniors yeah. and, uh, and, yeah. and 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 the, and the educational system of. And the they don't care about helping the state of New Jersey. Mainstream. Where no. the money goes to. They care about their own wallets. Okay. Filling their own pockets. Well. Well, hasn't Christie given millions? Don't go around helping them. Millions and millions to his rich friends. Yeah. Well, don't help them by adopting their talking points. Listen, to be fair, I, look, I have no allegiance to the Democratic Party. So to be fair, if a person, let's put it this way, if a person is poor and they got a chip on their shoulder and they want to pick a fight with a cop, and they, they, they give the cop a hard time. What the hell does this have to you do should, with anything? No, what I'm talking about is people People oh my God. from the poor areas that look for trouble. You, If you're poor, you shouldn't be banging out babies. If you're poor, you shouldn't be get over gambling. You shouldn't be in a casino. You shouldn't be buying $100 worth of lottery tickets. You, there are choices that you can make. You get your act together, you shape up, and you do it the right thing. You do the right thing. Instead of ha uh, having everybody feel fucking sorry for the person, you know. You better do a little more <coughs> reading on the pre-industrial revolution like all in the... England and Scotland and Ireland and France and see how those poor people lived and etc etc and it was their fault. It was their fault. It's your fault if you take your food stamps and you fill your basket up with cookies and cake there weren't and any garbage. Food stamps. 
They starved. To I'm death. talking about people that make they their make their own troubles in life. People have to take res some responsibility. Who the rich? No, no. I'm talking about, right. about I'm Let's talking about the poor who no, take no, 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 who no, take no. their money and do whatever they feel like doing. No, no, no. Just a. It's the same as cutting the budget. Oh, I'm a, I'm a Until homeless guy. Until you start honestly looking and cutting the big boys, do not attack those down below. No, don't attack those down below. But if well, some, you're doing that. But if somebody down below is a stupid idiot and does things that are detrimental. That's an individual. That's an individual. It may not have nothing to do with a group. But even so, yeah. you go for the big guy first. That's the fair way. Well, he's the guy with all the money. I don't care about his money. I'm talking about his morals. I'm talking about his money. I'm talking about whatever. You do not attack those down below uh, yeah. first. All right, that's your opinion. I, you. I agree with some of it. I don't agree with uh, pandering or cowtown to any group of people. That's it. That, that's my take on well, it. We do it to the rich right now. So until that is uh, stopped, you do not attack down those down below. That's my point. Oh, you just continue to just give special treatment to certain groups. Where's the special treatment? Certain groups. Where's the special treatment? You want you want me to get in deep go yeah. into detail? Give me one. You want me to go into detail? Give me one. Minorities. What about them? The bullshit call of affirmative action is unfair. Why? All right? Why? It's reverse this it's reverse discrimination. Number two. Where? Number two. Where? Gender hiring. I mean, a, being, a company being forced to hire a certain percentage of perhaps women or minorities as a quota. Doesn't happen. All right. All this baby Doesn't crap. Happen. All these babies. You know, every time I go to, every time I'm in an area in a medical center, you know how many young uh, uh, black and Latino women have a baby carriage? They have a toddler, okay? baby carriage with a baby. They have one on the way. If you are in financially at the bottom of the ladder, you have no business making all those kids. Okay? You want to get specific? I'm specific. It's not specific at all. It's very specific. It's you right wing talking points. But it's reality. No, it isn't. The right wing are not a hundred percent always no, wrong. It isn't. You're talk what you're talking about is the old time all, bleeding making... hard uh, 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 ultra liberal oh way of thinking. I'm talking about a fair economic system. Fairness goes across the board. Hey, women yeah, want women want on a top listen, first. Women want equality, right? It starts on a top first. Women want equal pay for equal job, which I agree. Providing they do the same exact exact job as a man, I'm all for it. Not 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 to like sit around and ask the guys at your company to do it for you, but you do it. Where do you get these Equal perceptions? That happens. Where guys I know tell me this. They're lying. They're not lying. Women that are especially attractive, they get guys to do everything for them. Not at their work. It's worst. reality. Well, you don't work in an office. You don't not know. Not at their work. They wouldn't last long. Cut it out. They get special treatment. Stop. Special you things to pandering kowtow treatment. I'm telling I'm you, I can go on and on with this stuff. I'm they going to they say want to be equal, except for dating. They want the guy to pay for everything. Why should when PR, another thing, why should when people go to the goddamn supermarket, why should the whole row be, be handicapped, so, uh, uh, right, the whole fucking front of the store has to be handicapped parking, all the way to the end. Why shouldn't it? Why can't it be the, the, the what it used to be? Five, three, five. Why does the whole row, the whole goddamn front of the store, have to be handicap parking? Maybe they have a lot of customers who are handicapped. That what many? That many? They make the that many? Not you. You think so? Yeah. That they many? Should, they wouldn't put it there if there was no need. Look, sir, I'm progressive, but I'm fair. I am no ultra liberal, bleeding heart ridiculous, unrealistic, hippie, flower child, liberal. I am progressive, but I am a progressive with logic and common sense, and I am fair. You are a progressive. Ken Thiessen would agree with what I just said. Oh, whoop-de-doo!
There Hello, are there are thing? people who have who are logical, highly intelligent individuals, and Ken is one of them. That's right, and that's what keeps the business of the economy going the way it goes. Is those attitudes? No, he's not hateful. I th he's who not, said hateful? He's not a bigot. Who said a bigot? He's realistic. No, he's maintaining that which is. Oh, so we should so we should kowtow. We should be like the the flower children of the '60s, and just let everybody Perception. have a thousand babies, and and just keep on giving them money. Oh, oh, you're Perception. poor. You got ten babies, twelve babies, thirty babies. Just keep on giving them money. I say it again. <clears throat> Until you attack those on the top, do not oh. attack those on the bottom. Once you situate the, you know, the, make that. Uh, the top situation, right. fix it up, then maybe you can t attack some things down below, but don't do it first. Mm -hmm. Because then you are being talk points. Well, a talking point is something like something preposterous. No, like, it isn't. Like what Jeb Bush said. No, it isn't. It's about his stupid prevention up, you know, on the Apple Watch. I it's mean, just a perception. Yeah, well, I'm That's talking all. about is very real. If you're poor and you're female, you got no business banging out babies like that. That's real. No, I'm not talking perception. Forget about it. You're not getting the point. No, I'm not getting Because you want to win. That's the yeah. goddamn truth. All arguments are winning. They're not informative. They're not, uh, you know, helping I'm people. I'm giving you concrete material. They are wins. Wins and That's losses? That's your problem. I'm giving you reality. Wins and losses. I'm giving you reality. No, you're not. You're what? wanting to win. No, I'm giving no, everything I said. Win. Everything I said was based you're on wanting reality. To win. You're wanting to win. Everything I said was real. That's the problem. Everything I said was real. It doesn't matter. I just said how many times already. Do you not, not attack those down below until you've done your job up there. At all? Don't attack, None. Don't attack those down below? None. At all? Well, None. I'm sorry. I just don't feel you have to kowtow and give special treatment to anybody. They've already been under those attacks. Now, <laughs> why do you got to add to it? Because, you don't I, get because it. I personally see and it experience bullshit coming from the poor. It doesn't matter. From certain segments it of the poor. You gotta do the top first. Alright, let me ask you a question. What do you, what is your opinion of You're um, not gonna listen to me, so why of ask the, the uh the mayor of Baltimore uh having a hands off policy with the looters destroying uh local stores? She didn't do it. She wasn't responsible for that? No. Did she call in the National Guard to stop them? They no. were there. No. Did they stop them? Were they there? I don't know who was there, but they didn't. nobody stopped them. If they didn't stop them, it was for a better reason. Then uh, more people would have got hurt. Uh, but, but they committed a crime. No matter. <laughs> yeah, then you have chaos. Hey, exactly. That's <laughs> what a revolution is. Chaos. If somebody commits a crime, you stop them, hook or by crook. And arrest them. Yeah, but and what if you them. can't? You need what more. if the, the what if the crowd that was there at the time got, uh, gets on your back and attacks you, and you have to shoot them all? Then it now you've gotten a, a situation you made even worse, well, haven't then, you? Then it became then it becomes escalated. Uh huh. But and maybe that's what they didn't want to do. But uh, breaking the law is breaking the law. All right, all right. I'm tell not saying to the rich first before you go telling it to the poor. Well, we all know they're they're bona fide. No, no, we don't know not crooks. We all know that the attacks should come from you to them first. Okay. That's what we know. Uh huh. Okay. All right. That's what we know. All right. Great. State Superior Court Judge David F. Bauman's ruling ba Bauman. that upheld the constitutionality of the phrase under God oh, in the Pledge of Allegiance was misguided on its basic principle. Bauman ruled that the pledge is not to be viewed as a religious exercise. In so doing, he ignored the fact that under God mm -hmm. was added to the pledge during the Red Scare of the 1950s, as pointed out by the American Humanist Association. It was specifically added 
to distinguish the United States from the Soviet Union, which was seen at the time by anti-communist crusaders as being a godless, atheist nation. I fully agree that the pledge as originally written, was not in any way intended to carry religious significance. Clearly, though, the McCarthy-era insertion of <gasps> under God was done specifically to change that, making a declaration <coughs> that the United States is a God-fearing nation, and that's not a religious statement. Judge Bauman. Yeah, God-fearing nation, uh, a Christian nation, and, and these people, these right-wingers on top, they'll, they know about what it's like to be a real Christian. They, <clears throat> the pot calling the kettle black. We got a, we got a light one, the bank, to finish off the show? I mean, a... <clears throat> Dear Abby. There we go. I have been dating Brandon for three years. Brandon. I'm 19. Going to a four-year college and I'm planning to move in with him. Ah, young love. I enjoy his company. And I can see myself with him in the future, but I wish I hadn't met him so young. Oh, she wants to get plowed, by. Right? She wants to sample different guys. I wish I could have experienced more other people and situations. A sausage, as we call in Italian. I'm afraid I'm falling into a trap where it is more convenient to stay with Brandon. I'm caught in the trap. I don't want to feel confined. You know what? This, this is an idiot. She can't make up her mind. She doesn't know what the hell she wants. But I also don't want to break up with him. <laughs> and find it was worse. It was the worst <laughs> decision of my life. <sighs> we have discussed it. He said he will understand. Sausage. If I want to leave. She wants to... She but I'm afraid it might destroy him. Yeah, well, probably will. Is she want to... She has. She only had one sausage, yeah. Only one in her life. I enjoy being around Brandon, <laughs> but I don't want to stay if it means missing half my life. He isn't the most attractive guy compared to others. Oh, no wonder she wants to get banged by others. What the hell she stay with him for? You ever see some boyfriends out there? They're pretty ugly. So maybe that's where all this is coming from. Asas each. More attractive guys talk to me. Ooh. Mm. Enticement. And I assume they would treat me as well as Brandon does. Ooh, no, she's, uh, she's curious. Maybe that's what got me thinking. Some advice, please. Roll the dice. You can go either way. Feeling as ambivalent as you do, do not move in with Brandon. To do so would be cheating both of you. Because someone seems more physically attractive than your boyfriend does not guarantee the person would treat you as well or better than Brandon. Very true. Very true statement. But then again, she's very young. These are young people. They shouldn't be tied down so early. However, this is a lesson you may need to experience firsthand. Yeah. It could also be a growth experience for Brandon to date others. Could be mutual. There you go. He has already told you he will understand if you leave. He's too young, too, also. <clears throat> so, he may be emotionally stronger than you. Give him credit for that. This does not mean that you won't eventually wind up together, but it may make you both more appreciative 
of the special relationship you share because you will have something to compare it with. I'm getting some advice from my conch shell here. I hear I hear some messages. Hold on, they're coming in, coming in clearly. They're young, young love. You know, they they, they just uh, it's just too young. What is that? Uh, who sang that song? Gary Puckett in the Union Gap. You're much too young, young girl. girl. Get out of my mm. mind. My love for you is way out of line. Something like that. Thank you for joining us for a very invigorating, uncensored, hard-hitting truth, to say the least. Was anything solved? Just a difference of opinion. But it's not a difference of we opinion. We did touch upon other um, mutually agreed upon subjects. We did. We 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 showed you how utterly ridiculous the Republican candidates are in every way, shape, or form. We showed you how they do not have any real workable answers to uh, helping the poor, uh, you know. But uh, hey, man, today there's a trend: girls keep the baby. Nobody seems to be getting abortions, and uh, they they don't particularly like contraception. Nobody. There's over 35 or 36 million a year. Abortions? Well, yeah. how come every time I see young females, they they got the, the the carriage, the toddler, and one on the way? Why maybe, do I always maybe see they're this? Maybe religious nuts. No. Yeah. And they even have birth to kids that are like mongoloid, and you know what I mean, like r r mental retardation. It, it's it's not fair to the kid. It's not fair to them. It, it it's a burden for the life, the life of the kid and the life of the parents. All right. Take care. Have a safe weekend and a good week. Tick it or click it. Click it or tick it. You better click it. You better click it. You know, save yourself an expensive ticket. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.